I'm off. Farewell, Eivor. Thanks for the good work, Eivor. Got a real little fishery going here. Are you the man in charge? It's my grandfather, really. But he says the best way to learn responsibility is by working. Besides, between you and me, I'm better at it. More of a people person, you know? I do. It's good to have you. Both of you. Your baker is done, Tavin. And our feasting table will be warmer for it. Eivor, that is... kind of you. I hope one day I can repay you. You are among friends here. There's no need. No need, but a desire. An earnest one. I remember the good things people do for me. To warm my heart in times when... when kindnesses are few and far between. There was one more thing, though, if you had a moment. A grain merchant has set up down river. I want to bring a half dozen bags home, but I would need an extra pair of hands. I cannot help now. Maybe later. Go, my eyes. Show me what lies ahead.
This is fine work, really. Thank you for seeing this done. I've charted new maps. May I see your stores? Let me update your map with this. I'm here if you need anything more. I will see. Be safe out there. Sunin, guide me. My eyes, Sunan. Tarbin. Eivor! Shall we go? I can lend a hand. That's a relief. I did not fancy asking Holger. Tarbin, what brought you to our clan? Your reputation. Heard folk say a band of hard-drinking, battles-guard warriors had washed up on shore. Said you had settled in the center of Mercia, taking in whatever floatsome, jetsome, and jumble of misfits came to your docks. And there's appeal to you. Always been a bit of a drifter. The thought of settling in a rowdy camp felt like a good balance. And being a baker, I knew my services would not be sniffed at. Yes, yes, I see you both. What can I...? It's you. What, what are you doing in Mercia? Collecting grain. Thirty silvers worth, if you can spare it. I do have the coin. Right. Well... Take what you need and get going. That should cover it. Thank you kindly. Of course. And you, uh... You take good care of yourself. Yeah? Is that your usual vendor? He seemed a little surprised to see you. Did he? Well... Could be he knows somebody who looks like me. There's no shortage of big bearded men around here, yeah? 
I suppose not. Need help with your grain? No need, no need. I'll do the rest myself. Bring it in and put it where I like. All right. It was good to speak with you, Tarpin. A welcome diversion. You too, Eivor. Thank you for your help. I don't know how to... Tovi. Eivor, it's Sven. He... He passed while I was away. Tovi, I'm sorry I wasn't there. No one was. We had planned to brand Tekla's barrels that morning, and we talked about what we might have for supper. And when I went to collect him, he was... in his bed. Sleeping, I thought. But he was already gone. I'm sure he went in peace. But he went with plans. Things he wanted to do. Things he meant to do. His death was so... empty. Not like in our stories. What stories do you mean? When we tell stories, the old and wise, they have this calm about them. They know when their end has come, and they are ready. Sven wasn't ready, and I wasn't ready either. He was supposed to teach me things. I'm still learning. Everyone looks at me like I will simply carry on his work, as if nothing happened, because they don't know. They don't know I'm not ready. Life may ask more of us than we are prepared to give. But all we can do is our best. Mm. I was not prepared to lose my parents. But in a flash, they were taken from me. I pressed on, determined to live. That must have been punishing. But you are so strong and so determined. Someone else might have done better than me. Or worse. But this was the fate woven for me. So I live it. I know Sven believed in you, in your craft. So do you believe in him? Do you trust him? He was the most skilled artist I have ever known. And he chose you. You may step up or step down, whatever you decide. But know that he had faith in you. Thank you, Eivor. I need to get home. Be strong, Tovi. And know you are valued. Hytham, I have the Codex pages you asked for. Six in total. Ah, wonderful. We have so little writing from the original Hidden Ones. This will grow our understanding immeasurably. These documents may have been inked by the founders of the Hidden Ones, in fact. But their names are unknown to us. Lost to history. A deliberate choice on their part, I think. I'm hoping these documents shed some light on that mystery. I could not say. They're written in a language I do not understand. You know, the black market merchant Reda has an old piece of writing from the same era as the Codex pages you found. Speak with him if you are curious to see it. Greetings! Reda, Hytham says you have an old piece of writing from the early Hidden Ones. Oh, that old scrap? Yes, it's just a short letter from one hidden one to another. One of my rarest artifacts. 
How did it find its way to you? A friend gave it to me for safekeeping. Bayek was his name. Egyptian fellow. Very kind. Haven't seen him in a long time. A very long time. Anyway, the letter is written in Demotic, so it may not mean much to you. But you're free to have a look. A warning, my beloved. I have heard numerous tales now of a secret codex circulating among the acolytes of our bureaus, both within and without the Empire of Augustus, called the Magus Codex. It names you directly as one of the founders of the Hidden Ones, apart from putting your life in danger. It flies in the face of what we have tried to achieve with our brotherhood. We are justice seekers who shun the light of praise for our good works and who must live in the shadows of our triumphs. Should you see any pages of this Codex, I advise you to destroy them. Keep the dream of our Hidden Ones alive. Oh, I am not so naive to think this will be a simple task. Few men and women are suited to keeping such secrets for so long. And it may be that we will fail in the end, but we will have failed in the name of righteousness. Take care, my love. My Iset. My northern star. Even in my waning years, I am ever your Osiris. Let our Horus live on beyond us. I think of you often, my jewel. At sunrise and twilight. At new moon and full. When the rain falls and the breath of a moon rides across my neck. I remember you kissing me. Just there, and I will take that feeling to my tomb. Evo? Tekla, you look like you wrestled a bear. Is something wrong? Gods, Evo! I was robbed on the road between here and Lincoln. By who? Did you get a good look at them? They were Saxons, I know that much. A pack of them lifted four barrels of my ale and all the coin I had on me. The biggest one pulled me off my horse and stuck his mouth in my ear, said, Tell Guthban we expected him home soon. Guthban? That's Battlebone in the Saxon tongue. Are you sure? That's what he said. It's not someone here, is it? Not that I know of. I do not begrudge us taking in orphans, Eivor, but some of these Saxons, we hardly know them. You ought to ask around. A good idea. You take care of yourself. Let me see to this. Thank you, Eivor. Tarbin, do you have a second? I was wondering if... I am Guthpen, Eivor. It means battle bone. Not the name of a cheery baker, is it? Not one who bakes bread, no. So, how did you earn this name? Before I came here, I lived another life. A brutal, bloody life. I served with a gang of mercenaries. I was their weapon, roaming the wilds of England did whatever they asked of me, and all they asked was violence. When I left, I laid this sword on the grass and made a vow. I swore never to spill another drop of blood, to abandon acts of violence, to never kill again. A hard promise for a hard man. It wasn't, not for me. This life here is all I've ever wanted. I've never been more at peace. This is my doing. I brought all this upon you. It is down to me to fix it. Tarbin, by threatening you, they threaten my clan. I cannot allow that. These men are foul, Eivor. You should not have to fight my battles for me. Do you not hear me, Tarbin? If they threaten you, 
They threaten me. So let us face them. Together. Very well. Meet me outside when you're ready. I believe I know where they will be. If you wish to face your old friends, I'm ready when you are. Good. I'll lead the way. I want you to know, should it come to blows with my old crew, I can handle it myself. Forgiving me is all the work you need to do. There's nothing to forgive. You walked away, they pursued. By axe or by fist, I will do what must be done to protect my clan. <laughs> You're living the life you want, aren't you? Stopping. That house, there. They're likely within. It won't look like much, Eivor. But don't be fooled. And don't take Wilf lightly, charming as he seems. The man is a serpent. I've met plenty of charmers who turned out to be snakes. I know, I know. Only a warning. Let's go inside. Gotham, my boy, as I live and breathe, you got my message, and you brought a friend. Who might you be, Dane? His new leash? I am Eivor, and the woman you robbed was one of my clan. That will not stand. I know, I know. I'm busted up about it. But tell Tekla, was it? Tell her that Arayal is some of the finest we've tasted. I am done with you, Wilf. But we are not done with you, boy. We gave you food, shelter, ale to drink, riches galore. We made you who you are. For all you did for him, he repaid you with blood and sweat. Did he not? You're a fiery one, I like that. But the ink was dried on this deal well before your number arrived in England. If you wish to clear Tarbin's name, I'm happy to help with that. It's only a small matter of cost. Some weeks back, soldiers confiscated my personal wares, shall we say. Tried to confiscate me as well, but I gave them the slip. If you're keen, you could recover my belongings and return them to me. Do that, and your name is clear. I... I can't. I promised myself I would leave all this behind, but... If it will clear Tarbin's name, we will recover what is yours. Where are these soldiers? Camp not far to the west. A battalion of bloated, brainwashed military men. You can't miss it for the smell. Wait here, then. We will return before you sprout another pair of horns. God go with you, Eivor. You found it! I did. Let's bring this back to wealth. You handled that, sir? They have returned. We have your goods. Beautiful. Beautiful. Put them there. The ledger. Of course. Happy to honor it. My goodness. Such a lack of trust these days. It's a dark age. No mistake. That's it, then. We're done? Aye. You are free to walk from this place and live as Tarbin the boring breadmaker for the rest of your days. But you, Eivor, if you ever get tired of the settled life, we could always use a thief with your skills. Think about it. <laughs> Drunk as Thor, Mithalda! 
job! Ah, it's good to be home again. That is, if I haven't robbed myself of the pleasure of calling it home. Tarpon, in spite of all, you're welcome here. And you owe us nothing but the work you love. Right. Payment in fresh loaves of bread. I can manage that. But first, one scrap of your past remains. Right. The ledger. Toss it. And purge the past. With pleasure. If I find one crack, that... I have a friend who needs that little Roman man you have. Octavian of London. I've a guess who your friend is. And no, Osbert cannot have his greasy pedestrian fingers on something so exquisite. Osbert? <laughs> oh, that is delicious. Yes, Osbert. A name fit for a poor failure. It'll cost a cow's weight in silver to get it in his hands. Fan of Rome, I see. I am too. Unique methods of torture. Crucifixion. Bronze bull. But where I am from, we have the Eivor. Nose lopped off, skin flayed, teeth carved out to wear as a necklace, then left to the birds. How much again? Ah, uh, free of charge? Let me just grab it for you. <laughs> I'll have to take this back to Osbert. Octavian, I have something that may interest you. Hmm? Maximilian sends his regards. <gasps> what? He... he gave this to you? That perfect little wretch! How did he bring himself to part with it? Ask no questions, hear no lies. I only hope you enjoy it, and that neither of us have to see that man again. Oh, thank you, Eivor. Thank you! I must be on my way. Ballet! The Danes. It's always the damn Danes. Make them pay their guilt for the dead that now litter the fields. Yeah! Show sense, please. What would the Danes gain from the slaughter of poor farmers? Look! There's a filthy Dane now! Why don't we ask? I did not touch your herd. 
Picked up our trail. Hold on. These Saxons fight like mad dogs to protect their own. I cannot blame them. Thank you for staying your hand, stranger. What is your name? Eivor, of the Raven Clan in Mercia. Wolfhilda, abbess of Barking, and inquirer into mysteries. Are we here for the same reason, I wonder? Aye, to look upon devil's work. But why would a Dane from Upriver care what happens to Saxon farmers? If there's a rabid wolf or bear on the prowl, I would see it dead. Blame often falls on my folk for such carnage. Well and good, Eivor of the Raven Clan. Take a look at the maulings, and tell me what manner of rabid beast did these things. I could start with the dead cows. You there! What befell this poor beast? Danes befell it. How can you be sure? It was Rothgar's war band. They're holed up in that old church, working their misery upon us. Warriors do not often go about slaying milk cows. Besides, I have heard talk of a beast on the loose. Bite marks, but not from any beast I know. And the corpse is covered in strange mold, though the wounds are fresh. You are brave ones for getting so close to this awful sight. I saw it, Roria. I did. The night it happened. I saw it all. What did you see? A wolf? A bear? Maybe a rabbit hound? It was a Jotun, as great as a tree. And it laughed while it ripped and teared. It yelled out its name. Grendel. A Jotun did this. I saw it. Blood still wet as dew. Where does it lead? Why the gods? What manner of beast flung that poor creature up here to its doom? What sort of beast leaves glistening mold over freshly killed prey? Yet that woman blamed the Rothgar and his band of Danes. Where the killer's men. Whoever it was, they were mighty enough to get a mauled beast corpse onto a rooftop. But that little girl said the creature was a giant, calling itself Grendel. This may be the work of a band of drunken Danes. Or... Far worse. I should discuss these clues with Wolfhilda. Wolfhilda, I have learned all I can from the villagers, and those dead beasts. And what is your take on the mystery? Still believe a wolf or bear did these things? This is not the work of a woodland creature. The bite marks, the mold, most art. So you admit this is the devil's work? Or one of your wooden dragons come to life? A few maulings do not make for a devil or a dragon. It must be a man, or a pack of them. The girl mentioned a name, Grendel. No. No mortal hand could rend flesh in such a way. Surely you see that. I have seen the worst the hands of men can do. Deeds bloodier than this. And these men stalk the night, slaying cattle as they go. True. This thing I cannot explain. Three times these attacks have happened. Each time, bite marks, broken bones and streaks of mold. Something wicked walks in East Anglia. Some other animals were attacked in the woods northeast of here. Let us go. This way. We may find more clues. Hey! 
picked up our trail. Hold on. Did the wolves get a bite of you? No. I'm unhurt. Thank you, Dane. I... misjudged you. No need. But tell me what happened. The beasts came scavenging for fresh meat. I meant, why are you out here with the dead cattle again? I'm... searching for my best milch cow. She's missing. And you found her? No. But I found a Danish axe. It belongs to Rothgar, leader of the war band. You know for a fact this axe is his? Yes. He brandishes it about the village, demanding ale. I will speak to this Rothgar and his war band. That woman is certain a nearby band of warriors caused these maulings. We have no other clues. I know the men she means. They're staying at the church near Brisleek Farm. Come, meet them. Their leader, Hrothgar, is a great man, for a heathen. He is no cattle killer. You have curious opinions, Wilhilda, and an uncommonly open mind. I should say the same of you. Most heathens would point to witchcraft or monsters, but you seek an earthly cause. I have seen many strange things, but the answers are usually close at hand, if only hidden. True. Yet in this case, the Church has tasked me to explain the unexplainable, that, at times, introduces unholy ideas. And your church accepts your unholy ideas? They tolerate it. Lucifer is a deceiver, and God himself works in mysterious ways. So I too must remain open to all possibilities, mundane and otherworldly. Which is why you tolerate a heathen like me. Perhaps. Or perhaps all of us, heathen and Christian, stand within the folds of a greater mystery. off, Eivor. Hrothgar's men are rowdy sorts, but the air is far too still. Stand back, priestess. This is war work. <clears throat> Hrothgar and his men, they... they were good to me. Have a care, Wolfhilda. The killer may yet linger here. Their leader, Hrothgar. I do not see him among the dead. I shall find him. Eivor, look up. More blood. Someone crawled into the loft. Or dragged the body up there. <laughs> Back you. Back I say. You are Hrothgar. Leader of this warband. I am. A Finnmark raider and proud of it. <laughs> For the little time I have left. I bear ill news. Your warriors have fallen. Who or what did this awful thing? The monster did this thing. It killed us while laughing. Laughing! It broke my axe and gouged me. I... I crawled up here to die. <clears throat> what was it? Did you see? A foul Jotun. A nightgoer from the world's rim. It spoke. Named itself Grendel. Said it would return. <coughs> Good. We shall wait for it to come back. You and I. Not I. My wounds are too great and my spirit takes ship. Send them to Hilheim. 
for me. Ride with the winged women, friend. I will handle this Grendel, whatever manner of monster it may be. Wait, warrior. I will to. To not scare the demon off when it returns. We will wait up here for it to show itself again. Get your rest, warrior. I will stand vigil with prayer. Stars. Beast! Today you die! No kill! Play! I play! Picked up our trail. Hold on. Mother! It hurts! Oh, what the hell? It hurts me, mother! Grendel only want to play. You make Grendel hurt. Mama, I want to go home. I'm all that is holy and bright. What manner of monster is that thing? Not a monster, but a man. Strange to behold, but this... Grendel is... was... a man. But where did it come from? All men have mothers. This one called out for his in the end. And all of us, even the most hideous, have souls. Oh Lord, forgive this man his sins, and grant unto him your grace and everlasting love. Mold everywhere. Stay here, Wolfhilda. I'll follow this trail. Grendel must have tracked this mold here, but from where? More mold. I'm on the right path. The source of the mold must be near. into this pit. Huh. Huh. 
My head swims with fever dreams. What just happened? Randall! Randall! Is that you? Answer me! A key! So fitting. Yet, what use is it? Picked up our trail. Hold on. You. You smell like my son. My son's blood. Where is he? Where is my boy? Don't make me do this. What wickedness is this? You. The woman from the farm. You lied about the Danes. To protect my boy. He never meant to hurt anyone. But the others, they could not see. He, he kept growing in body, but not in mind. He was my boy. Sweet little Brenta. <sighs> Wolf Hilda must know the truth of this. Abbas. A4, you live yet. Pray, tell all. I slew a monster that was but a man. Then I tracked his mother and killed her too. His mother? She struck at me in the dark and I defended myself. But it was no hero's deed. Those poor souls. I shall pray for them tonight at Barking Abbey. Leaving already? I must. The bishop is eager for a full accounting of the Beast of East Anglia. Leave my name out of your tale. It is nothing to be remembered for. Understood. Perhaps it would work better as a song. I dabbled in verse as a youth. It may be time to lift the pen again. But what story shall I write? The full truth of this thing may be hard to fathom. Give them a comforting one about heroes and monsters. For the truth, the bone-cold truth of everything is... Often hard to take. It cuts like a cruel north wind on the neck. God saves us all, A4. I take my leave now, but will write to you once my poem is complete. Farewell. Thank you, and farewell to you too, Wolfhilda. Make it a good tale.